Right, mate, so I I did feel a bit out of order after Paul Thompson told me that I, I'd won this completely wrongly. Yeah. And uh, I think it's only fair to give you a chance to win it back. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So we're here on the mini golf course. Yeah. Have you played mini golf before? No. No? No. Oh. I've played it a few times, but I'm sure you're going to win. And to make things fair and square, I'll just put the trophy there. To make things fair and square, because you're a lot taller than me, here's your golf mallet. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I've got a nice long one, but yeah. Yeah, you just have to hit the ball into all of these holes, and the person who gets it in the hole with the least amount of wax is the winner. All right. Yeah? Sounds fair. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally fair. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right, let, may the best man win. All right. I quickly got the impression that Adam had played this game before. Yeah! I had a bad feeling about this game. Things were definitely not going my way. The landscape photographer of the year, well, he took his shots with poise, patience and elegance, which is definitely not how he celebrated victory. That, that, that was just a test shot, you know, just to see if he was paying attention. He was. I was losing patience with my bad luck, and the smug grin on Uncle Grumpy's face was setting me up for a massive conniption fit. Oh, come on, you can't do that. Oh, God. Unbelievable. I mean, look at... Oh, no. This is... This is cheating. Oh, come on. What What a joke, man. Anyway, my last chance at redemption. Let's see. Oh, here we go. It, it, oh. So I graciously accept defeat and hand Uncle Grumpy his Landscape Photographer of the Year trophy. Thanks, buddy. After all, he did win this award fair and square. Yes! Although I could probably have done without that humiliating victory lap he did. Anyway, at least I had a day of photogasmic landscape photography to look forward to, so we set off for Claxvik during the rush hour traffic to get in line for the ferry. Right, so now we're just about to get on the ferry to the island of Kalsoy, where we're going to hopefully take pictures of the lighthouse there with the dramatic cliffs and the... Oh God, you've opened the cheese again, haven't you? We told you about this. It's, 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 it's not acceptable in a confined space. Oh, it smells like a cat's ass. <laughs> it does. It's literally, it smells like Leo's sheriffs when he's had a right big episode of the squids. It does. That smells like a cat's ass. Well, I like it. What's up? No, I don't want to. <laughs> does it taste better than it smells? That's good. I can't imagine any woman wanting to kiss you after that. There's no woman around to kiss me, so. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, it, it, honestly! <laughs> it smells like me boots. <laughs> oh. Extra lagrette. Maybe that means it smells more than usual. Extra smelly cheese. If you want to empty an auditorium, open one of these. Oh, I'm oh, glad that's over. Whatever you do, don't pull that bloody dried fish out. No, no. Oh, come on. No, no, oh, come please. It's really good. Don't open it. Oh, God! Oh, oh, God! When it hits you, it is like being around the back of a fishmonger. Oh, it's got little hair on it. Oh, that is so stinky. It looks like human skin that's been dried. Maybe that's what it is. Why does everything you eat stink? I like stinky thing. If there's any more of that behaviour, I'll, I'll take my shoes off. I'm sick now. And so we boarded the ferry to the island of Kalsoy. And I was wondering why the ferry was so quiet today until I realised just how windy it was. Once I climbed the upper deck, it became very obvious that this would be a rough old ride. I was beginning to wonder if Uncle Grump and Stench had the stomach for this journey. So we're on the ferry to Kalsoy. That is Kalsoy over there. The trip takes only about 20 minutes, but I will not be spending the rest of it out here in the freezing, gibbering cold. I shall be in my warm, terrible Kia vehicle. 
I wasn't even sure if I had the stomach for this journey, and I wasn't the one who'd just scaffed down some stinky cheese and even stinkier fish. Oh. Are you alright, mate? No. Oh, it's, it's a bit wavy Davy, isn't it? Oh, don't oh. say that. I bet you're wishing you hadn't scoffed all that dried fish and oh. stinky cheese. Oh. <laughs> if only the Grump and Thorpe had stuck to coffee and baps like the rest of us. I wouldn't have had to spend the next hour cleaning up Grump Chunder. Ah well, it was as much my fault for taunting him as it was his fault for his poor food choices, but the rest of the ride was nice and uneventful and we were all delighted to avail ourselves of the wonderful restroom facilities at our destination, especially the Grump Clops himself. So despite Uncle Grumpy's dietary uh, problems, we've made it to Kalsoy and we're going to hike up to the lighthouse, to Kalur Lighthouse and get that beautiful cliff shot. Now when you get to Kalsoy and, and if you want to do this hike, this is one of the very few locations in the Faroe Islands that has a toilet and what a lovely toilet it is. It's heated, it's really comfortable. So whoever built this toilet and maintains it, thank you very much, I owe you a coffee because a lot of people probably really appreciate this. Okay, so the trail begins just there by those big rocks and then we just traverse this ridge up to that big rock up there and then it's a diagonal sort of ha I would say a little bit steep for the next 30 minutes but the views just get better and better the higher you get and the wind seems to have died down now so we might be in for slightly better conditions. There's nothing quite like the squelch of mud, is there? At least I hoped it was mud. Turns out I was wrong about that wind. Those waves were bigger than houses. It got more and more blustery the higher we went. We'd have to be very, very careful on those high cliffs of doom, but you know me. Careful is my middle name. Oh, that, that, was, just, that was just a stage fall. We, we would never really fall. Oh, look at the cute little lamb. Get, hey, come back here, I want to cuddle you. The lighthouse finally revealed itself like an illuminated beacon, which, well, I guess that is exactly what lighthouses are supposed to do. But that wind was becoming a major problem. Even if we made it safely to our vantage point, it was going to be a challenge to capture a steady shot of this spectacular landscape. And the view, well, I'll be honest, it was worth the collapsed lung. So we've made it up to the lighthouse, to the Kalur lighthouse on Kalsoy. And oh my God, this wind is, it's a bit scary. So the plan is to hike over to this ridge over here. Now the problem is it's a very narrow uh, walkway with steep drops on either side and if you fall that's it, you, you're toast. And the last time I, I went across there was last summer and it was a really nice day. We didn't have these winds and there was no worry at all, I got across easily. But in these winds it's either a fool's endeavour or we just crawl across or kind of shuffle across on our bums. Because ideally we want to be on that ledge there looking back towards these cliffs and the lighthouse. And the way that the light can catch that uh, cliff edge and then the mountains in the distance, it's an absolutely epic shot. It's a guaranteed epic shot, but I just don't know if I've got the cojones to go across there right now. Uh, let's have a look. It, it can't be that bad, can it? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's a bit sketchy. What about the other side? Oh, uh, uh, that's not bad. Ah, let's try it. In fact, I'll, I'll even try walking backwards. There, there you go. It's not that bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, no, that's enough of that. It's time to switch. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. And this is what it's all about. Well, I'm glad to say we all made it across the Gorge of Doom. Uh, just over there, so there you can see the lighthouse. We managed to very deftly crawl across here and up here in very, very high winds. And I'm very proud of my group for having the balls to make it across there. So now we've all got situated on the cliff 
and we're all we're all set up with our compositions it took a while to find our compositions there's uh, Grumpa Lumper over there <laughs> and um, it's just a case as usual of waiting for the light when we first arrived and I was just setting up my shot the light was amazing but by the time I got my focus dialed in and all the settings that's it, it it was gone we had literally I don't know 20 seconds but as I've said so many times on this trip the light is ever-changing if you don't like it wait 25 minutes half an hour an hour at the most and there's so much going on in the distance out in the ocean there there's all kinds of different weather systems making their way in just look at all this that looks like some serious rain on its way and then if you look in this direction some spectacular light on those mountains in the distance we just need that here with black clouds behind it that's all i ask that's all i want maybe a couple of rainbows unicorns all that business <laughs> Come on, Paul. Hey, look behind you over there. <laughs> there are times when I ask myself, why do I do this? I'm stood on a freezing cold cliff dealing with hail, but then look at this business. That's why I do this. And so here is the first shot of the day. And it's actually a still frame that I took from that time-lapse clip that you just saw. And it was shot on my cheapo $600 B camera. And what's funny is that I rushed the composition as I had the feeling that this light was not gonna last. And what's so impressive in this scene is just the sheer scale of those cliffs and even the cheap camera picked up the details of the birds and the sheep that you can see close to the cliff edges in the center of the frame. Now I'd love to be able to tell you that over the next four hours of freezing in the cold waiting for the light to change that we got some juicy light but we didn't. This was the most photogasmic light that we saw all day. This was one of those days where the weather just got worse and worse with none of those brief but golden moments of rapturous light. So I decided to keep on shooting and try for a dark and stormy. For this shot, I decided to go for a long exposure at 1.3 seconds. And while it does lack the dynamic light of the first shot, it does capture that dark and stormy mood. And I also had more time to frame up a better composition with a wider focal length. Now I'd love to know which of these two images you preferred so please post a comment below and just let me know the reasons why you preferred one shot over the other. Well we waited three, what was it, three or four hours? Four hours. Four hours in the worst weather. We had snow, rain, hail and not much sun. And I think it's time to give up. We, we've got some okay shots. We've got those moody, dingy, dark light shots, but it wasn't what we were after. We were after that storm light where you've got black clouds in the background and lovely light on the mountain there. We didn't get it. So it's definitely time to head back, get the last ferry home, and then maybe enjoy a beer. I've had the shot. Had the shot. <laughs> Did you get a shot? I did. I got a shot of the, the light on the ocean. That's the shot of the day. It's a, a consolation shot, was it? It was beautiful though, but... It was tough. It was tough. And it was cold. And you've had some of your stinky fish to uh, cheer you up a little bit. I'm have some stinky fish right now. Oh God, no. Oh, it feels really good to be back on Vancouver Island, eh, Gavin? Yeah, it is good. I like, I like to be back with the cedar trees and the rivers, but that trip to the Faroes was, it was pretty majestic. You know, when I first got there, I thought, oh, I really miss my trees, but I must admit, it was absolutely fantastic mm. there. Did you get any good shots? Because I, I saw your video, and oh, I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> Those cliffs, I think that was possibly the most dramatic landscape I have ever laid eyes on. I must admit, it was awesome. Yeah. Epic. D no, you can't use that word. Oh, it was lovely. 
And that's a bit lame. Uh, awesome. That's even lamer. That's tremendous. There you go. <laughs> now you're talking, yeah. It, it was, it was tremendous. So if you want to come to the Faroe Islands with us and get absolutely amazing pictures, maybe even as good as the pictures that I got. But not quite as good as mine. Uh -huh. Here is the link to join our workshop. So, what kind of things are we going to be shooting, Gavin? Oh, we are going to be shooting dramatic cliffs that just soar up into the sky, catch that beautiful light. We've got waterfalls that pour off of cliffs into the ocean. It is unbelievable. Is that with sheep? They'll, they'll be sheep. Oh, great. Ginormous mountains on a super gnarly coastline. Colossal sea stack. Oh, I love a sea stack. Oh, I do too. Do you like them colossal? Oh, yes, especially with sheep. <laughs> <laughs> we could get arrested for this shit. Even some phallic rock formations. That look like big c <laughs> so right now there are three places left on this workshop. So if you want to join us, jump on it. Hope to see you there! Push, push, push.